good one here. So Linux can hear. Exactly. Because when you mention Harry Spare. Say, I lost me virginity in the bushes behind the pool. <laughs> yeah, that stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid story that <clears throat> the world hug on to. And a oop. Greetings, Internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hi. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me in our bedroom for our little program here. Okay. So, uh, what do book clubs mean to you in your life, my darling? I've never been in a book club before. Hmm. Um, I have gone to one meeting before, but yeah. I, I didn't go to another, so it's never been a part of my life. But that book club meeting, those gals have been doing it for years Yeah, and they continue to do it. Yes. Uh, did you, you just felt like an outsider or you just didn't vibe or yeah, they were older than you? Some of them were. Yeah. I, yeah. And you recently joined the friends of the library for, a. Uh, the Arthur F. Turner West Sacramento Library. Uh, it was a hundred dollars or something for a lifetime <laughs> membership, uh, and you joined that uh, because you wanted to well support the library. You love to read and possibly make friends and go to meetings. Um, yeah, but I've never been to a meeting, and yeah. I've been a member for about three months now. Yeah, and I don't know that I will ever go to a meeting. <laughs> well, it is. It's it's on a weeknight, and it's at 7 p.m., and you got to drive over there, uh, pain in the bum, but you do get to meet Alex Hirsch. Hmm. Uh, but recently, you came upon a book club within our condominium complex. Can you tell us uh, how you discovered it and uh, how you joined? Yeah, we have a poster board bulletin board by our mailboxes and people put up information and flyers there and there was a poster advertising the river book club yeah. river readers with a date and text this number if you want to join this is the book we're reading so you signed up you text a phone number uh and a gal named lisa who's been running it uh, adds you to her email newsletter oh great another sub stack i gotta subscribe to um and you got a few weeks head start and what book what was the was the group was the book group uh meeting the book club uh, reading <laughs> intending to discuss the book is called horse so as soon as i saw the flyer i texted lisa i hopped into the library my library account and ordered the book so i could get reading it right away have you heard of this book, Horse, before? Um, yes, I've seen it in the library, actually, uh, but I'm not really interested in reading it. It's not on your thousand deep to-be-read list <laughs> no. on Goodreads? Uh, wine, snacks, uh, what, what did you intend to bring? What did you actually bring? What were you expecting? I was going to make something like some hors d'oeuvres and yeah. I was going to bring a bottle of wine, but yeah. then you told me that's a, that's too much. That's overkill. It's, it's, it's a little thirsty. Yeah. So I just went with a bottle of wine only. Yeah. I went to nugget earlier in the day of the meeting, mm -hmm. the day of the meeting. And I <laughs> stressed out over what bottle of wine to buy because I don't know what people like. Yeah. I'm not a wine connoisseur. Yeah. We drink the cheap boxed Franzia crap. Yeah. So I, I don't know what to buy for we're, we're classy other people. Folk. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I, I know nothing about wine. So I was, uh, bought it on the label because I'm very, uh, very superficial. Uh, but you ended up getting a $10 ish bottle of wine. And, uh, I see here in my notes, honey, that it was a screw bottle <sighs> of wine. Is, is this, is this scandalous accusation true? I didn't realize it was a screw top until after I was already had already gone to the book club. Uh, I was like, oh, it's so embarrassing. Just they rolled their eyes and said, amateur hour. Yeah, because it turns out that they're like very into wine. And a couple yeah. of them are members of the Bogle Winery that's nearby us in Clarksburg. Yeah. So me bringing a $10 bottle with a screw top, not a good look. Yeah, you, you brought it unopened. It stayed unopened. <laughs> it was... Returned to me at the end of the book club. And she said, 
<laughs> she said, uh, maybe you can bring this to the next book club. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then they'll t- t- turn their uh, cork dork snobby noses up at it in a month. The same. Uh, were you nervous going in, honey? Uh, you wore earrings. Did you oh, wear yeah. makeup? Did, what, what, oh. what, did, what, what was going through your head as you walked over? It's a two-second walk from where we live. I was nervous. I'm always nervous meeting new people and in yeah. a social setting. I I didn't know what to expect. I I don't know any of these people. So I was very nervous. Yeah. Uh so you walk over, started at seven. Yeah. And by the way, you still made dinner. You made me, Lennox and Luna oh, dinner. Yeah. We had a family dinner. Uh we had a sit down and uh you still made it over there. So Congratulations on <laughs> Thank you. Uh, appreciate you doing that. I do it all. Yes, yes. You you can have it all, girls. Uh so you walk over, honey, the door opens. Can you describe uh men, women, ages? Oh what's the scene? No men. So and... it was all women. It was it ended up being me and four other women. So a total uh, of five of us. Yeah. Uh one woman was like in her late forties mm. and the other three were Mid sixties, wow, maybe pushing seventy. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Any idea how long they've been doing this? No, and for a while though. I, well, they have all been friends for like, years. It seems. Gotcha. I did get that impression, but I don't know how long they've been doing this actual book club. Okay, and you walk in, and what's the first rule they greet you with? <laughs> we always they they have to talk about the book for fifteen minutes. Right, that's their rule. And then as long as they do that, then they can socialize the rest of the time. And, and then the gossiping starts and the S talking begins. The libel. And that oop. I love her. That's what the neighbor's hearing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We've already said too much. And that oop. So at the 15 minute and one second mark, the gossiping <laughs> begins. The mud slinging begins. And it's like a beauty salon. Uh, what... What was talked about during the socializing? Um, did you talk politics? They always say, don't talk politics, oh, don't talk religion. There was so much politics talk. Eh. They talked about Ukraine and Israel oh, and North dear. Korea yeah. and Biden and Trump. Yeah. I, Why? <laughs> <laughs> but they were all, they all agreed. On, oh, yeah. They right? were all on the same page. Yeah. Pro Biden. Uh, and then they questioned you. Yeah. They were like, oh, you aren't a fan of... So and so, are you? And I said, no, no, I'm not. You didn't uh, represent MAGA, honey. <laughs> you didn't uh, say January 6th was just tourist I... sightseeing, the capital. <laughs> hmm. I agreed with everything they said ah. so that they would like me. Ah, I see, I see. Uh, and I see here in my notes, they spoke ill of one uh, gal in our condo complex who we love, who we hold near and dear. Uh, and so, uh, are, how are you going to nego- negotiate this? Being friends with the one gal and then being friends with the anti-gal book club? I just want to be friends with everybody. Mm. And Switzerland? Uh, yes. Neutral? That's me. Uh, it's like, well, it's like being uh, friends with uh, having a Ukrainian friend and having a Russian friend and getting together at the bar and tossing back a few. Uh, okay, so uh, I want to set this up. So. There's a gal who walks around here, uh, and she's uh, highly sus. Uh, can you describe her a little, honey? She always wears the same sort of outfit, yeah. but it looks like slightly different. Like she has a whole closet full of like variations of this particular outfit, and she wears uh, it all the time. She's like Superman with a closet full of uh, shirts that say S on it. And we see her walking yeah. around the neighborhood all the time. Yeah. Um, but it turns out she has some mental issues. Yeah. She's really not well. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know she lived here. Um, cause once in a while unhoused people wander through here and whatever. I mean, we are near the river. Um, but, uh, I, I just thought she was an unhoused person, uh, currently temporarily experiencing homelessness through no fault of her own. Um, but then the second part of this is that we went on a walk recently. Uh, we go we go around the condo complex, 
And listen, we're on the east side. You go to the west side, it's a whole nother story over there. But we went, we were on the west side of our condominium complex. And there's this door with red all over it. And it's very disturbing. And I thought, okay, this is either a paint job. It's gone red wrong. splatter. Yes. Yes. So it looks like a horror yes. film or Halloween decoration. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, okay, this is a paint job gone wrong or uh, this is human blood or I, I, <laughs> or or Halloween. Halloween uh, and they, they just haven't cleaned up. It's been six months um, and they were doing a haunted house or whatever. Fake blood on, on the door. Uh, they're lazy. Um, but uh, it turns out uh, we got you got the meaning of the door, the truth behind the door. Can you expose it, honey? Yeah, so this lady that we've mentioned, she has been throwing paint at people's doors yeah. and like wow. verbally assaulting people. Jeez. So, she, yeah, she's just antagonizing her neighbors and it's been a big issue for them down at that end. Yeah, yeah. And she has, her parents have money and so they own the condo. And then she stays there. And she recently got arrested, but then she's back. Yeah. I don't, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I, I'm not sure what's going on. I have to go to the next meeting so uh, I can continue to get more information. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to uh, go wrong by way of this uh, young gal. Um, please don't uh, splash our door with red paint. That would be, well, not fun to clean and just a nightmare to deal with. We don't want no beef. We're Switzerland. Switzerland, I say. Uh, what were the snacks, honey? Did you drink? Well, I could tell when you got home. You, <laughs> to you tossed back a few. Uh, but how, how was the food? Uh, did they have granite top counters? And was crown molding involved? No crown molding. No mm. no marble. Mm. But somebody bought, brought brownies. Ah. Lisa had laid out some crackers and cheese and olives. Mm. And the five of us went through like three or four bottles of wine. Wow. <laughs> uh, not my wine, of course, yeah. but the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a few glasses of wine. I ate a few pieces of cheese, and they gave me the leftover brownies to bring home at the end because they didn't get eaten. Uh, and I, they said, your kids can eat these. <laughs> did you feel, do you wish you had brought food or did you? Did no. You? Okay. I'm glad I didn't. Um, yeah. Lisa had plenty. And okay. And I, the, I wish I'd brought a better bottle of wine. <laughs> well, we housed that wine the next night. It was two glasses, two large <laughs> glasses. Uh, but two tumblers. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. Uh, you came home immediately and used the bathroom. You didn't use Lisa's bathroom. No, I had to pee so badly, but I didn't want to use the yes. bathroom the first time going to somebody's house. Yes, I've taught you well, my darling. <laughs> I've taught you well. Uh, well, when before you left, you said, what time do you want me home? And I said, I don't care. Uh, but then 9.15 came and I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to bed. So you got home mm, 9.20-ish. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the next one? Uh, do, does the location rotate to various yes. club members? Oh. Yeah, they take turns hosting it. It's always on Thursdays. Mm. Um, I don't know if I will ever host it in the future. Why not? I'll bartend. I got the kids. I got you. I got Frankie. Lennox can hang out. In, in our room, uh, Frankie can hide under our bed. Uh, I want I, I want to be a part of this. It has the the book has to be nonfiction, of course. Um, and I could be a real man in a book club. How how was Horse? How was your review? It was okay. I didn't love it. Did you say that out loud? Were yes. you afraid? Did they sing its praises? Yes. And so I went. I think I may have annoyed some people because uh, they really liked it and I didn't. Yeah. But I, I really tried to like soften the blow. Uh, I I didn't say really all my true feelings. <laughs> That's good. Well, no one wants to be be completely honest on here. Then, then uh, life would be bedlam. Uh, do you feel like you made friends? Did you get numbers? Um, are you are you, is this going to be a regular thing? Is this going to be a hobby of yours? I'm going to keep going. Good for as long as I enjoy it. Yeah. I don't feel like I didn't particularly hit it off with anyone specifically but it's, it's hard to yeah to join a scene that's been going on yeah for a while. like an established group of people and i i didn't talk a lot mm. i i didn't feel like 
there was a lot of conversation and I've, I, I didn't always know when to jump in, but I did try to, yeah. I tried to insert myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, yeah, I liked it though. I had fun and I do want to keep going. Okay. That's good. Uh, I feel like you need friends. You need that. Uh, you need that in your life. Uh, yeah. That avenue, that space. I do. That connection. Um, as for me, uh, I probably need friends. I used to have friends, honey. It was a good time. Uh, but currently, I, I I either don't need them or that part of my brain that needs friends, uh, I just, I, I push down. I, I, I tuck away. Why? Uh, sure, because... Because it's hard for men to make friends. I mean, it's hard to make friends in general as adults. Uh, but I think it's harder for men because we don't want to seem vulnerable. We don't want to put ourselves out there. Uh, I, I think that's... Because I've had acquaintances uh, throughout my time in Sacramento, but nothing's ever stuck. Um, and I think it's... well. Because men can't cry, honey. I'm not sure if you know. Uh, you women don't let us cry. You don't let us show our feelings. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm pushing pushing that desire down. And uh, hopefully one day it doesn't spill out onto onto into red paint onto a door or something. Uh, what's the next book on uh, in the book club, darling? It's going to be Spare by Prince Harry, Ooh. which I've already read, and I told them I've already read it. Hello. I was considering rereading it, but nah. Uh, I didn't love it the first time around, so it's okay. I lost my virginity to a gal in the shrubbery behind the pub, <laughs> and then my brother William pushed me because he got mad. All of that true. All of that in his memoir. <sighs> I, I, do you think William really pushed him? Yes. And then Harry didn't push back or fight back or come back at him. Harry's much more virile. <laughs> Is he? Andrew's, uh, or William's, a uh, wussy. <laughs> Just a skinny, uh, 160 pounds soaking wet. Harry was in the army, although. William, Aren't they both? Yeah, William, well, William did the helicopter. I think William's an angry bully. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's why uh, Kate went missing. For four to five months, honey. And that oop. So in other news in our live, live, life, life, L-I-F-E, uh, we got expired meat from Walmart again. This is the third time it's happened in five, six weeks. Um, and uh, the first time it was three weeks expired. So that was a no-go. We had to toss that in the trash. Yeah. And then the last two times... Uh, it was, well, the most recent one was one day. And then the the second time, it was just a couple of days, which we ate. Yeah. And we didn't die. We're not dead, right? We're not dead. <laughs> um, but this has been an ongoing problem, and it becomes a whole deal where you say, honey, we got expired pork or whatever. I'm coming to expect it every week when we, we get our groceries delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I hop on the Walmart chat, and I go back and forth with some rando from uh, somewhere not in America. And it's always a lovely experience. And we always get refunded uh, the $7 in change. Um, and then we eat it. So it's free. Um, but this has happened three times. Uh, what's up with the workers? Do they check? Do they care? I wonder if I'm guessing they just grab whatever is there. They don't care. Yeah. My second theory is that they see it's expired, yeah. and they're like, ooh, we got to get rid of this. Ah. No one is going to buy this willingly, so let's just get rid of it. And most people don't check. And then the people that check don't hop on to uh, walmart.com and file a customer servant's grievance. Well, I think we, we always get it for free, and it takes a few minutes of chatting, going back and forth. Uh, but uh, we spend... We have Walmart Plus, which is a hundred bucks a year, and then we spend five to six hundred dollars just on groceries a month. So the Wally algorithm always uh, tilts in our favor. Um, we always get a refund, but I think next time I should 
we we should uh, ha- we we got the expired meat. Take a picture of it. I'll pretend to get sick. I'll I'll fake my near death. Teo Torres will come over here, and KCRA will interview me, either him or Mike to sell. Uh, and then we can sue Walmart, take him to the cleaners, take him to the bank, and we can we'll be rich, honey. Okay, we'll be rich. Uh, we took Len and his friends to the pool last week, and so was Len and four of his friends and me and you, and we were, we walked to the pool, and uh, we were walking in, and then a certain member of our community of our condo community was walking out and she goes are all these boys with you and we were like yeah yeah lady we got this what if we said no would she have would she would she have been the pool popo yes and be like you're not allowed in here she absolutely would have watching len and his friends frolic in the condo pool uh you were nervous it gave you anxiety <laughs> Yeah, because they're, you know, they rough house a little bit. I don't yeah. want anybody to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, there was one point where uh, Lincoln was on the edge of, like, he was standing on the edge of the pool. And then Lennox's other friend, like, ran up and hit him like a freaking <laughs> linebacker. And I was like, okay, well, just running w- with all the water on oh, the yeah. oh, concrete scary. everywhere was bad. And then he could have hit Lincoln in the wrong spot or uh, just at the wrong angle. And I was like, that so i said you guys chill (laughs) less horseplay calm down simmer down pipe down and then len and his friends wanted to go into uh the treadmill room and the weight room and i said no (laughs) first of all y'all are out here wearing crocs and y'all are wet and i've been in the gym uh when kids like mob in there and manhandle every they're just goofing around and i'm like len if you really want to lift we can do that, but I don't want you playing around. The gym is not a playground, and you could really hurt yourself on the yeah. moving treadmill with the super heavy weights. Um, so I did not let them go into the gym, but Lennox is always welcome to go to the gym with us. We beg him to go with us. Yeah, and he says, we'll go there, and then if no one's there, then let me know, and we do, and then he never shows up. Ah, oh, It's good we have each other for accountability, honey. And that oop. Frankie recently vomited twice in a day. It's just that boy. Um, When Frankie dies, honey, the process of cleaning and and remodeling this place, we're going to deep clean the carpets. I want to get new carpet. Okay. Because he's scratched the heck out of it in certain places. Yeah. Uh, We're going to get new window screens. Yes. Uh, And retexture the the walls yes and then paint paint because yes. he's his scratch marks are all over the oh walls and the windowsills plaster of paris is needed uh a few people have been in our dms uh asking us about our fallout with carla carla <laughs> okay and by a few people i mean liz and alan uh carla and us we're back on oh we're so back on. We're so in love. We're back in love. Uh, she recently met Luna. Luna went shopping with us. And while we were leaving, uh, Carla told Luna, your parents are super cool. It's like, yeah. I could die happy right now. <laughs> I, I, I feel like we should, well, we definitely should include her in uh, the lemon blueberry cake. Yes. List. Yes, uh, I agree. Grab her some flowers maybe on, <laughs> on Valentine's Day because we just scored super points. Um, when she first walked by, she didn't say hi because we were busy. She was busy. Uh, and and I, I whispered to Luna, I said, that's Carla. <laughs> she's, a, she's a West Sack influencer. We stand. We stand our queen. We stand our queen. Uh, oh, I see here in my notes, honey, that before me, you didn't shower in the evening. You weren't an evening showerer? No, I was always a morning showerer. Weren't, weren't you, weren't you, uh, was it mad capped? Were, were you short on time? Was yes. It... My mornings used to be so crazy before you. Yeah. And before my shower schedule changed, I used to go to work with wet hair constantly. Ah. I always was rushing, yeah. didn't have enough time. Yeah. And I, then I showed you the way. Showering at night makes so much more sense. Yeah. Why would you come home and not shower after you've know. been out 
and about all day. I do not know. Why would you get in your bed like that? I, yeah, I, I can't pinpoint when I became an evening showerer, but since I went, once you go evening showerer, you don't go back to non evening showerer. Well, because uh, you, first of all, you sleep so much better when you shower and you're clean. Uh, and then, yeah, your, your bed, when you hop in it and you're nice and uh, wet, clean as a whistle. Fresh and so clean, like the Outcast song. Uh, your your bed sheets are getting all musty and dusty, and and you have more time in the morning. Yes, it's not I, uh, stressful. I will never go back to my old ways. Good, yay! <laughs> um, Len recently got some fries from uh, from the Hawaiian barbecue place, whatever. Uh, but it was five bucks, and he didn't tip. And we were like, "Why didn't you tip?" And he said, why? And it was hard to hard to justify. <laughs> yeah. Hard to retort. I do I do think tipping has gotten out of control in our society. Yeah. I've been reeling back my tipping. I used to be an over tipper. Yeah. And but now I've like reeled it in. Well, there's one thing when because waiters and waitresses earn very little, right? It's like yes. three or four bucks an hour. Yeah. Because they're gonna make bank and tips, uh, presumably. But uh, like this Hawaiian BBQ place, they don't. There are no waiters. They they just bring it to the counter. They take your order. They bring it to the counter. Uh, so I assume they're making at least minimum wage, unless something, uh, some hijinks are going on, some legalese, some legal wrangling is going on, um, something illegal. Uh, but well, I I still I still think you should tip, even as. If it's just something. I, I know. I do too. I, I, I just feel guilty not. Like, yeah. I have to tip at my wax place. Yeah. I tip at my hair salon. Uh-huh. Uh, today we went to a coffee shop and yeah. I put a dollar in the tip jar. It was just a couple of coffees they poured for us. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I yeah. just, I feel guilty if I don't. So yeah. even one dollar I have to do. Yeah. Uh I well, I, I just think you're buying their goodwill. Like, the next time Lennox goes there and gets fries... The fries are going to be uh, severely undercooked or something. No? Hmm. Uh, we watched What Jennifer Says. Is that what it's called? What Jennifer Did. What Jennifer Did. Netflix. Uh, Vietnamese family, Canada. So that means whenever uh, someone said oot or a boot <laughs> or hoose, we said oot and a boot and hoose. <laughs> I don't think we were taking the attempted double murder seriously, honey. Uh, it's, it was pretty good, right? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> the biggest thing that we discovered is that in Canada, cops can lie. Like this cop was lying to her about all the evidence they did not have and how uh, she was pretty, pre- pretty much guilty. And I was like, what, what's going on here? So it's legal. Does that mean it's illegal in America? So uh, cops just lie all the time in America too. Yeah. But they never get in trouble for it or penalized or anything. Yeah. Because cops lie everywhere in every country, I think. Yeah. Well, it's it's in Canada. It's just the letter of the law. Like they can be free wheeling with the, with the truth. Um, it's odd. Like at, to what extent? Like we know we have. Your husband's body in the river. We found it, and you're guilty. It was very odd. It is. And then um, the other thing about that documentary is, so young Vietnamese gal hates her parents, and oh my gosh, there's so much pressure, tiger mom. They want me to be a pharmacist. So she hires a hitman to kill him. Uh, But she goes to her on-again, off-again boyfriend, whatever, and she's like, I want to hire a hitman to kill my parents. And then he puts her in touch with the hitman who eventually kills the mom and attempts to kill the dad. Uh, He survived. Um, But so the person, the ex-boyfriend guy, putting her in touch with a hitman, he's guilty of what? Introducing people? He's like a co-conspirator. I guess. An accomplice. It's very odd. Like I, I think it's perfectly reasonable hmm. that he should get have gotten in trouble, which he did. To what degree? But because he was part of the the whole legal case, and he got several uh, like over a dozen years with 
the rest of the people who pulled the trigger. I don't think he should have gotten as much time as they did. Yeah. But yes, he you can't be doing that. He I, knew what the intent was. Yeah. So he's guilty. Yeah. But he he could just be like, hey, Jen, this is my friend Hector. And he has what you need, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it, well, it's it's just very fuzzy terror. I mean, the cops are lying. Uh, <laughs> you you go to jail for 24 years if you introduce people. Canada is crazy. Get out, get out of there. <laughs> um, I ordered. So we went to the coffee place today, and I ordered a Vietnamese coffee because I'm half Vietnamese. But on the menu, it was just listed as Vietnamese. <laughs> so I was like, all right. I usually get a cappuccino, but I figured uh, this is unique and you can't find this Vietnamese coffee everywhere. So I walk up and I said, I would like one Vietnamese. And it sounds really weird when you order an ethnicity. <laughs> so I said, uh, I'll take one Vietnamese, please. And I thought, I, I sound like I'm ordering a, a human on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Hmm. <laughs> But it was really good. It's it's coffee with a couple shots of espresso and a little bit of condensed milk. Too much condensed milk. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, if you ask me. Uh, but I did it for my people, for my mama. <laughs> and uh, you recently bought some apples, honey, at Nugget Market. Uh, but you kept them out on the counter in the fruit basket. I like my fruit room temperature. I, I think apples belong in the fridge. A, do, a cold crisp apple, it is nice, I do admit. Yeah. Well, I, I moved them into the fridge. Did yes. you notice? Yes. Okay. Yes. Bananas, definitely fruit basket. Uh, avocados, definitely fruit basket. Berries, you, you put berries. I put berries in the fridge. Yeah. Mangoes, well, basket. Well, an apple is just a giant berry, honey. Okay. What are we done, honey? Sure. Okay. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for Athletic Greens. We don't have a promo code for Athletic Greens. Goodbye, my parasocial podcast friends. I love you. My wife and I love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, my 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 wife, my wife may have brought a screw top bottle to book club, but she's still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Thank you for caring. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Oh, bye-bye.